Welcome back to the How to Make a Game series. This is part two, and if you are new to UPBGE, I strongly recommend you watch the first part. If you are just interested in one system, I will have timestamps in the description below. Now let's get into the tutorial. Starting with the first person camera. If you followed the first tutorial or already have a player movement system, select your player and set the cursor to the center of the object. Then add a camera into the scene. Position your camera in any place that looks good to you. Parent the camera to the player object using the Keep Object Transform. Then position the camera facing the forward direction of your player. Then set the field of view to be zoomed out a little. Now select the camera using Logic Bricks and add a mouse sensor and a mouse actuator. Then set the mouse sensor to movement and check the frame tick icon on the top left side of the sensor. Connect them together and select Use Y Axis and deselect Use X Axis. This will allow you to look up and down. Now select the player object and add the same logic bricks, but deselect the Y axis and select use X axis and make sure to check the frame take icon. If you don't, then the camera will not move. Now when you play the game, you have a fully functional first person player. Now let's make a top down player controller. Select the player object and set the cursor to the center. Then add a new sphere empty and scale it to be just bigger than the cube. Click on the player object and tab into edit mode. Then select a single vertice and Shift D to duplicate it. With the vertices selected, press Shift plus S to set the cursor and keep offset. Then in object mode, select the empty and the cube. With both selected, tab back into edit mode and select the vertice in the center and press Control P to make a vertex parent. This will allow the cube to rotate without affecting the empty, but it'll still move with the player. Now parent the camera to the sphere empty. It's time to add some logic. Select the empty and add a mouse sensor and actuator. Set the sensor to movement and check the frame tick icon. Then set the actuator to look and apply it to the X axis. This will allow you to rotate around the cube. This is optional for top down games. You can also just leave the camera static for a classic top down experience. Now add four plane axis empties and position them around the player in a plus shape. Then parent them to the sphere empty. Now just give them a name so you can find them easier. I just called them WASD. Select the player object in the logic node window and enable states by clicking the triangle under the controllers. Set visible to state 2 and initial to state 2 as well. This way we don't interfere with our other logic nodes. Note, if the initial layer is not selected, your nodes will not work. The visible layer just shows what logic you have in the initial layer. Add four keyboard sensors and add your movement keys. For me, that's WASD again. Then add four edit object actuators. Set them to Track To and set the time to 6. This will allow your player to rotate smoothly. Sometimes you have to play with the track axis till it rotates to the proper empty. X usually works fine. To make this process easier, select the forward face of your player object and apply a different color to see which direction the player is facing. Now we'll add movement to the player. Just add one motion actuator and set it to point 0.1 then add a OR controller. Now connect all the keyboard sensors to the OR and the OR to the motion. That way you always have a consistent movement direction. Now when you press play, you have a working top-down player controller. But now let's add another feature to this top-down player controller. A lot of top-down games allow you to zoom the camera closer to the player. Select the camera and go into the animation window. Add a location keyframe to frame 1, then press G and Z twice to bring the camera close behind the player. And add another location keyframe to frame 100. Now add an always sensor and an action actuator. Connect them and set the action to property and assign your camera animation. In the property tab, add a new property and call it zoom. Make sure to check the frame tick option as well. You can now test your zoom by setting the property to a number between 0 and 100. Add two mouse sensors and set them to wheel up and wheel down. Then add two property actuators and set them to add. When you wheel up, add one. And when you wheel down, add negative one. For the final result, I will set it to add 5 and minus 5 to zoom faster. If you press play, you'll notice that it works, but the property goes past the amount of frames you have. To fix this, add two property sensors and set one to when the number is greater than 100, assign it to 100. And when it's less than 0, assign it to 0. Now you have a nice zoom feature in your game. And finally, the third person camera controller. The setup process is exactly the same as the top-down controller. Now we just have to add a few new components to the player. Start by going to the Preference panel and add Logic Nodes Plus if you don't already have it. Then change the Logic Bricks window to the Logic Node window. 
Now that everything is set up, select your camera and set the cursor to its location. Then add a new empty and call it cam end. Select the player and add another empty and call it cam start. Go back to the camera and add a new empty sphere. This will act as our camera's safe zone so the camera doesn't clip through floors and walls. Now parent the start, end, and sphere empties to the main sphere empty. Then parent the camera to the safe zone empty. Everything is set up and ready for logic. In the logic node panel, add a on update node and a raycast node. Connect the on update node to the condition of the raycast. Now we have to tell the ray where to go. Add in a get world position node, then press shift D to duplicate it and connect one into the origin and the other into the aim. Set the origin to the cam start empty and the aim to the cam end empty. Check the visualize box to see where the raycast is going. But before you press play, go to the dashboard tab and apply the logics to the sphere empty that's around the player object. You will now see a red line that turns green when it hits an object. Now that we have a working ray cast, we can go back to the logic nodes and add a set global position, rotation, and scale node. Connect the has result to the condition of the set position node. Then connect the picked point to the value on the set position node. When you press play now, you'll see when the ray hits an object in the scene, the camera will be pushed towards the player but it will not go back to the end empty. To fix this, duplicate the set position node and connect the on update node to the condition. For the value, duplicate the get position node with the cam end object selected and connect it to the value. The camera will now go back to the end point when it's no longer hitting an object. The rest is just positioning the camera into a good place. That is three ways to set up cameras for your game. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in part three of how to make a game. If there's any other videos you'd like to see me make, leave a comment below.